Mother Earth is pregnant for the third time. For y'all have knocked her up. I have tasted the maggots in the mind of the universe. I was not offended. For I knew I had to rise above it all. Or drown in my own shit. Alone, with only memory and vice to guide us, we tried to find a home amongst the matter. We found a safe and protected space to create, and on its floor, the little feet begin to patter. We painted forms on stony walls to store the sources of our story. We raised our gaze up high, to put it in the sky, to correlate the constellations, all according to our design. We spelled their alignment to mirror our environment, an experiment to tell the passing of our time. In this space, we built a palace to chime our supernal rhyme sublime, a chalice to contain our pooling essence divine. This fermenting cauldron did hold the genesis of all our glories. We did congregate our quarry in this quiet place to get warm and horny, to rest at end of journey, to fiddle hands, craft, create and conjure, to indulge euphoria, a vast sensorium, our phantasmagoria. A memorial filled with vast potential was this initial chapter. And in this surrogate womb, the cellar door we filled with laughter. Then, one fateful morning, we did begin to sing and chatter. We learned the word, and with the word, we named and tamed the herd. We tamed the flame, and on that day, they break away and pave the world of hurt. We burnt the plain and deigned to rain our vanity over grain. And we tilled the wilderness, domesticated its finesse, all within our domain. And the forest's tall, we burnt it all for our cindered and child remains. We felled the trees and by degrees did slip away from origins. Converted timber into lumber as a piece of us did slip ever deeper into slumber. We used the tinder and the kindling to warm our fading umbra, as yet unaware of any fatal blunder. We used the number to marshal the forces to our hunger. We slayed the giants for their defiance to our thunder. And long before we codified the outline of our tribe, we waged a genocide against the others of our kind. Where once then is over and Neanderthal did thrive, in time the sapien only would survive. Our acoustic field periphery did flicker and fail, did stutter, did spit static. Our roots split and savaged, somatic, traumatic, and a fracture in the attic. We did capitulate to the quadratic. Our plotting laid out got lost in a lot in front. Spherical topography yielded and gave the square a decisive victory. Did yield to its enframing territory. A primal scream in the primordial scene. A bicameral hemorrhage in the Eocene. And so our fate was sealed and the evidence of our divinity concealed. Confined to what blind sight alone revealed. Our cave domain now just shadow play. Aegis, a leaden and heavy shield. Over this linear plane of dominance we turned the plough. Did sow the seed of history's ignorance, create this present state intransigent, allow our disturb and eternal now, all with one decision, to forge a world conforming to our vision. We began to plunder all the wonder from under the loam, dreaming thieves of absent meaning, longing for a place to call home. From this pallet we forged a mallet, to smash it and then add it to our form. From our dreams we conjured means with which to string the precious things. Then we made a scene to put between our meaning and the world, did wrap our kin in stitched clothing, to place a skin around the centre. Created a hallowed space to enter, not knowing a piece of us we banished. Did vanish in absentia, did establish our dementia. Did begin this fetid venture, for with obscene invention, though with every good intention, in the gaps of its dimension, did our fascism form attention. This incision did schism, did become heated with a friction did create a hell of new dominion in which to fester and separate a lesion. So began the season of our sworn allegiance to a treason. For in this hidden septum did congeal a great and terrible division, a grand and haunted conception formed within the doors of our perception, a spectral sentinel that obscure our mission. Coronzon did split our single Elysian like light within a prism and did bind us to the sect of a religion. It forged the iron bars that cast restrictions to our rhythm. Scarred mechanical, maniacal manacles round the wrists of our vanguard. It brand and sear their metaphor into the heart and mind and voice of our condition. 
seizures sky on our arborescent environs spit iron in our horizon this patrician did threaten us with sedition and incarceration within a prison an imp of perversion lurking in the sight of our possession his institutionalized mode of perception the signal reception the inception of our condition the seed in need of exorcism to ease our sad contrition so set forth the patriarch hce he did embark a sinister linear experience, a time that he also christened. Repent, relentless, and yet condemned to the endless and the stench of his advance. His cryptic triptych cornered and squared in the intersection of an orrery. His tetragrammaton and anagram, a purest agalma amalgam of teraton grammar with which to speak his horror glam. Bound us within the shifting sands of a hologram. The cowder upon us hidden. Absurd, obscured obsidian, that lepidian sunset that did give meaning to our mission. Iridesce and shimmer, coalesce, the infinite glimmer went into remission. The horizon collapsed, the sun slept and left us bereft, and in its wake he replaced a forgery, a fake. Eldritch, rigor and rictus his hate, his lurching gait a contorted mortis, his thought a piercing, searing hiss, a fuming piston, his sapience an abortion, in the weave of his fascia a torsion, choreography warped and distorted. A clockwork winder of heinous divisions reporting with immaculate machinery precision, machinations that maligned a fearful symmetry, endlessly turning to inflict infirmity. A bubbling, churning, a sepsis venom burning, a caustic bile did boil on his tongue. A hydrostat in stasis concealed behind his many faces. A bucolic vial did he breathe from his lungs and did spit its poison. He licked its amber into its tender wound of our yearning, preserving our renewer, our young and blooming searching. He split us down the middle, and with our soul did fiddle, planted in our mind a riddle. He did tinker with the axon, an axis aperture obscured by his hateful learning, his horizontal cipher engram, envelop conquer horizons as Saturn devours dimensions. His homuncular, crepuscular, eternally. His hysterical, chauvinist endgame to hypostatize, concretize, and inframe whatever margin he could tame. An emperor in the code, the mode of signal changed, and our eternal majestic presence devoured. And that explosive mighty power was channeled into his tower, and from its peak a single eye did begin to tweak and glower. We internalized this psychic tear. He deigned to peek and speak into the deepest reaches of our despair fear authority, that horrendous edifice ruler. The emperor knew clothes encoded on the node, a paranoid surveillance camera concealed in the depths of mind. Just a bit in time, the black iron prison, yet the entire fall of history from this little bit arisen. The demiurge was so inclined to entwine us in a line, and in his benevolence he bound us to subservience. He put each inside their space, pervade us from reconnecting to our morphic sweet embrace. Thus began this chase, this race against the faceless. Make haste towards our essence in its disappearing trace. Efface our names and devour our fading grace. Cast us into a vase where time is dependent upon space. A repulsive field of other did breed between the brothers, and a sinister skein of whispers did seed amongst the sisters. Our tactile social grooming transmuted into rumour did descend into a murk of brooding mist that concealed a growing tumour, did blister a forked and double tongue of speaking, would reveal a second face whilst preserving the pretense of remaining chaste, would bite the thumb in a moment that was sneaky, might make haste to vent and fume when somebody left the room, could pretend to ch turn the other cheek, to cheat and play meek to keep secret one's own denied intent, would sow distrust behind the back, would gossip, manipulate and tact, would threaten, scheme, connive and bribe, all to improve one's own withstanding within the tribe. So I was set a binary, defined, defined within a rigid boundary. Us versus them, ruled by the loudest he. Chest beat, berate and venerate the most violent and dominant ape. It did dictate to make us separate from nature. It did cause us to fabricate a maker. And in his image did we pillage, and did plunder and cast the useless asunder. It did set ourselves against our neighbor, did condemn our souls to labour. Beguiled by our own wiliness were we, slowly coerced into currying favour. We formed a contract as our trusted waiver, did savour the excess, did accumulate and store a hoard for winter, did arrange between ourselves to create a state and share some things for later. 
We made a pact to create a stack, store for what our tomorrows might lack. Another devil's wager, tied down for what we couldn't carry on our back. An inch to parry off attack, a hoard for fear of futures uncertain, paranoia prey what may lay behind the curtain. He ordered a hall in which to perform and store, formed an apportioning of class behind the wall, cast each in a seat, determined who was allowed to speak, to find a drift, a rift between wealth and poor, between health and the door to death. But this wall was naught but a double-edged sword to keep away the hoard, a prescient testament to our spreading psychic cracks. The fractures managed and anchored by this feudal lord. Food for naught but bread and board. Confused and thoughtless are served into their extortion. In their allotted portion, yet more room for alienation's contortion. Isolate resound and bounce an echo. Tune out a signal channel. Uneven eleven up the volume on our distortion panel. Outside the wall that gathered those marauding saboteurs not fit for civilised etiquette. Heathens, their very breath, would steal the meaning from the written record. They sought only to sow discord and threaten our hallowed law. A barbarian rabble, their Babylon an omen of civilization's epithet. Quick, sneak ahead above the parapet of those authors of our downfall. President-elect, please provide a vignette to define this other from our home. Enemy within my frame of reason. Paranoia, pl please, O Grand Master, we are pleading. Appease this condition. Restore the honour to our story. Return to us our glory. Make our nation great again and those incursive insurgent forces tame again. With the virtue all avert our aversion, rewrite a new version of events. Repress the pain of the sentence in our restless and relentless. String them up with thy gizzard until their grand wizard does repent. They are destroyers of sacred tomes, their guttural utterances an affront to our sacred governances. For fear of them we must withdraw, cordon ourselves off from the all. Protected by this wall of clay, inscribed with our Levi a leviathan bribe, its rules ciphered and encoded by the scribe, beyond the senses of the layman of the tribe. He did decree the hierarchy of the hive, and though a riot was suppressed, the cost of the loss was not yet apparent. It wasn't long before our senses began to dull and quiet. As we settled into blander diet, we lost some hints of flavour. We settled down in settlements like sediment on a riverbed. From this stead we fed our lot, and in its frame we constructed our plot. This is us, and that is them. Our all accounted for in this then. Another margin for further rot. Our search for more nutriment became a fundamental detriment. Sedentary and stationary, a rock did sink into the pit of our wellspring. Did block the disappearance of our feeling. Beyond the perimeter of our seeing, this fossil they forgot. Life became a hereditary subsidiary. Please stick to your allotted plot. We got to keep up the breeding to keep the spreading of the seedlings. Like grazing mules, we foolish tools needed gruel to fuel our bungling hunger. To sate it, we lost our sense of wonder. We actively repressed our thunder. Ciphered and siphoned off by our fundamental blunder. Fire for a new aphasia to aid the spreading of the maze. And amazed as we were at, as we were at our own praise, we got lost in a labyrinthine days. We inset and set in stone this terrible and haunted malaise. Day by day, we lost those ancient ways that led our ancestors to flourish. And with this loss, we lost contact with anything that might nourish. In this inertia did amnesia feed, and in some occluded space within our race did our essence begin to bleed. We set the pace that set us face to face with the consequences of progress and greed. We capped creation's tap, banished our forgotten lack lost our way back, the memory no longer intact. A dagger thrust down deep among us, buried in a place most tender. A debt owed to a hidden lender, did stab the heart of a tall white fountain splendour. The ember wound did coagulate and scab, did festoon and entomb this trap, did crown our sorrow and drown out any last memory of the sound. In his hollow all hallowed light had faded from our jaded state, such that nothing could be found and in its place a hunger insatiable did resound. A carapace lithic monument did sprout, did stand testament to our demise, did lacerate our sunrise, did incarcerate our despairing spirit, did whisper its conceit, did forge a seat, a throne of bone, a song, a monotone of drone, and a tome of stone speaking of a life on loan. You will have to pay the toll if you would like to return home. 
prostrate in repentance before his throne, all lies which did connive to contain the cries of the dreaming dead. A cryptic and lithic prison in which to incarcerate our dread. A crimson court which fed in gilded halls, whose bread was forged from bloodshed. Shaded from the sun by the edifice that belied its secret script, that reached and did pierce and rip the sky. A crumbling folly to our longing, a trembling cenotaph of wretched belonging. A despised and haunted mausoleum, which in time did, ta which in time did turn into the Colosseum. A simulation complete as the square and framed the sphere. The absolute conquest of history's fear did claim a victory here. United in a circle, an obscene circus giggling at the scene of our confines, colonised to celebrate as every last piece of our soul is tortured and then dies. He did decree a tournament to incorporate the disproportionate, to perpetuate the monarchy, to subordinate the proletariat under the thumb of parliament, a disarmament of this heartened state, an ornament to celebrate his reign and all it meant, a delicate tourniquet, a surrogate to slake our delinquent benefit, a game staged within a frame to tame our insatiable flame. The master moved past the past and the present to create an eternal day. Checkmate not yet tricks the king, sidesteps the pawns and the peasants advance, befuddles them into yet another trance. With his prideful and baleful glance upon this circumstance, he wondered how he might further enhance his stance. As father of this brilliant romance, he did deign to reign over all the forces of his domain, and he sought to tame all the sports and devotion to his fame to strut in vanity all the adornments of his motives profane. They would celebrate his elegance and worship his benevolence, despite his burgeoning disgust and violence towards all beneath his station. In dire malevolence, he did make many preparations. He expanded the terror treason of his nation, enslaved all those that did recoil his gustation. He, he spied a disgustful rabble and in his motives did flare with hate. Now, it would seem, the barbarian babble stands within his gate. And it's his albino burden to placate and sate their ungrateful might. He heaved our gaze unto this frightful sight, and with a sleight of hand we did gather in the light to celebrate our own plight. At a spectacle we did delight. A delicate inversion to remove our compersion. Our own alienation reached such a degree that we elevated it to a sublime aesthetic delicacy. Like Yahoo ghouls, we slaver and drool, all for entertainment's delight and zoo. Such would come to mark the future of our decline, to coordinate an apportioning for the aborted forces of our becoming. Inebriated by performance and all of its glamouring adornments, a recursive script and riddle encrypted in the fabric of time. Elevate, honour and celebrate the gladiators and the jesters, all to conceal his crime. A throne for the celebrity, replete in naked absurdity, we desperately ingest the poison chalice and quaff its bubbling malice, all under the auspice of an obelisk ode to phallus. Echo and resonate a thunderous applause as we tethered our soul to a leaden ballast, inebriated and stupefied on the grape and grain, while our spirit is libated, secreted and secreted. The hidden teaching of a sacred hydration was taught within the palace. The excess was excreted, a blood cult feasting on our labour and other mysterious teachings. Meanwhile, alas, like Daedalus are past, the masses are coerced and conscripted, persuaded by the callous script of kings to subservience, to live with clipped wings and aspirations, doomed to debt by endless taxations under the cloak and dagger corporation. The corpus of our story became the property of a fiction. All the masters of the craft must pay tribute to his vain jubilation. They all tricked into veneration. Unaware of our labyrinthine deviation, Stupefied in fascination at the depths of our intoxication, though capable of infinite creation, beaten into submission through fear of predation and the need of protection. The slick trick to have us believe it's the way it needs to be. Smoke and mirrors all to protect his trembling hegemony. A narrative befuddlement to have us accept our position at the bottom of the pack. All because of our forgotten lack, our fear of, of a dwindling stack and of an imminent attack. But most of all, a guarantor for our amnesia, a big other to appease our fear, the absence that dwells within the shaded depths of mind, the ultimate horizon as it backtracks into a rescinding point of black. Are you not entertained?